Greetings, this is Prostodontics on Friday, which explains implant prostodontic steps and its side effects in a very easy and interesting way. Today we are going to look at fixed implant prosthesis for fully edentulous patients and the lecture is going to be given by Dr. Park Hyung from Seoul East Dental Clinic. Greetings. Thank you for appearing on Prosthodontics on Friday. Before we begin, can you please provide us a brief explanation about your lecture? Yes. I've looked at a lot of videos on dental site, and finally, I get to appear on the dental clip. It's a great honor. The honor's ours. Today, I'm going to talk about fixed implant prosthesis for fully dentalist patients. Today, our society is aging rapidly, and there are more and more fully dentalist patients and patients that are borderline fully dentalous. There are many ways to restore these patients, but I would like to talk about placing multiple implants to provide fixed restoration. Beginners find treating fully dentalous patients as daunting. I hope by listening to Dr. Park's lecture on dental site, I think people will have more confidence in treating these patients. For those of you watching from dental site, feel free to leave your questions and we can communicate real time this way and Q&A session will be held to address your questions. Starbucks coffee coupon has been prepared for those who participate in the chat. Ask a lot of questions on the chat screen and win your coffee coupons. I look forward to your keen interest and let us begin Dr. Park's lecture. Greetings. I am Dr. Park Hyung from Seoul East Dental Clinic. As mentioned, today I'm going to talk about fixed implant prosthesis for fully edentulous patients. I'm going to provide an overview on the subject. If you look at the statistics on oral health issued by Ministry of Health and Welfare, Amongst those over 70, fully edentulous patients take up about 16%. This means patients without a single tooth. There are people with one or more teeth, but these teeth can't function and they're basically fully edentulous. And in reality, accounting for these patients, the number of fully edentulous will rise significantly. According to the statistic, more than half of those above 65 have difficulty in mastication or phonetics. Therefore, the importance of oral health has increased with aging society. Not just the elderly, but those amongst the middle age may need prosthetic restoration when they become fully dentulous. There are many fixed restorative options of complete denture, implant over denture, which uses a few implants, ISRPD, implant assisted RPD, which is RPD supported with a few implants. This has be received the limelight these days. Today, I'm going to talk about placing multiple implants and providing fixed prosthesis for these patients. Although they may all be fully edentulous patients, depending on treatment method, Patient satisfaction and discomfort can vary significantly. This is a drastic example and this may be difficult to swallow for some people. This male patient was 89 years old at the time. One body MS mini implant were used. 
This is used frequently in lower anterior. This implant was used for immediate placement. Immediate loading was done and zirconia restoration was provided in the bridge form. This design cannot be provided to younger generation. However, considering this patient's age and conditions on the antagonist, I believe that this patient will be able to use this restoration without major issues. Yes, I agree that the treatment concept does not change entirely just because the patient is an elderly, but considering the patient health, economic condition, and the masticatory force, we can provide minimally invasive treatment that is slightly different to what is provided to younger patients. Implant treatment is more complicated for older patients compared to the young. They may have underlying disease or osteoporosis, and therefore, implant treatment prognosis may not be as good. However, if you look at the recent systematic review in long-term follow-up of patients over 65, after 10 years, the amount of marginal bone loss was approximately 1.5 millimeter. This is actually quite similar to that of younger generation, and there's no major difference. The conclusion of this study was that age alone cannot be a limiting factor for implanted treatment. Age should not be contraindication for implanted treatment, and I agree. Of course, many precautions need to be taken, but implant treatment can be provided to patients regardless of age, and it is a good treatment modality. The previous case had one-body mini implants, but you can see that there are many different implants here. There's just normal implant. 8mm and 7mm short implant in the posterior area where mandibular nerve is closed, 4mm implant was placed and full arch restoration was provided. This patient was an older patient and it was difficult to do advanced surgery so minimally invasive surgery was done. Same day restoration was provided. If you look at the image on the left, Minimally invasive surgery was done, minimal flap has been opened, or in some cases, flapless implant placement was done. And small implants were also used. This was possible because the antagonist was RPD. If antagonist was strong, I think this is a type of treatment that we need to pay more attention to. Factors determining design for implant prosthesis for fully dentulous patients. There can be many. Patient factor. We need to look at the level of alveolar bone resorption. This plays a significant role in patient's economic condition. This can limit patient options. You need to consider whether the antagonist is full denture or has strong masticatory force, whether it is fixed implant, Depending on patient's age, you need to look at whether the patient has underlying disease and can undergo advanced surgery. In the end, it all comes down to bone. Can I ask you a question? Sure. A lot of older female patients have osteoporosis. If the fully edentulous patient has D4 bone following Leclom and Zarb's bone classification, to give you an example, we can consider overdenture and bridge. Will it affect prosthesis design and treatment modality? What's your opinion? When we treat elderly or older female patients, at times the bone quality is very bad. We can see patients with extremely spongious bone. It's almost like an empty eggshell. And implant placement can be difficult in those times. At times it can be difficult to overcome the obstacle, but in most cases, there are multiple options we have to get the good primary stability. such as undersized drilling, 
doing bone graft ahead. Different methods can be utilized to gain a certain level of primary stability. If we just could push past the initial stability dip, then after that, the bone quality and implant prognosis will not be significantly affected. We need to overcome that period where early failure occurs. In the past, I studied in Sweden and studied implant. I did experiments on rabbit. If you do ovariectomy on a rabbit, it induces osteoporosis. You make osteoporosis. In order to see the impact of ovariectomy, comparison was done. For comparison purposes, there are two rabbits, one without ovariectomy and one with ovariectomy. And if you look at the result, the one with ovariectomy has osteoporosis. After the experiment, the conclusion was that even with osteoporosis, implants can be placed and it does not have significant impact. That was the conclusion. Osteoporosis is not an absolute contraindication for implant treatment. However, when the bone quality is bad, we need to consider the antagonist. You need to consider whether the antagonist is sound or if it is partially dentulous. Please carry on with your lecture. Now, I'm talking about placing multiple implants to provide fixed prosthesis. The level of difficulty and treatment duration differ between maxilla and mandible. Maxilla is much more difficult. It's kind of ironic because in full denture, lower, it's very difficult. On the other hand, in implant model, lower is comparatively easy and upper at times can be very difficult. In full denture, it is very difficult to do mandible and patients complain and as a joke, dentists say that we need to charge patients differently between upper and lower. Maybe that would lead to less complaints on the part of the patients. Yes. In the case of upper, especially when the patient has used denture for a long period, bone height is insufficient and bone width is bad as well. Bone density is low, so implant placement itself can be very difficult, and implant placement in a proper position can also be difficult. However, in the mandible, there's a lot of bone loss, but it's mostly vertical bone resorption. And if you place short implants, placement itself can be much easier than doing it in the upper. I've come up with the frontal image. On the image on the right, the patient was fully dentulous and full denture was used. The denture base compensated for the lost volume of alveolar bone. It did not affect the patient profile significantly. However, when I tried to place the implant, because there was vertical and a horizontal bone loss at the same time, it was difficult, close to impossible, to perfectly repair the loss that has occurred buccally. The crown was too long and aesthetically unfavorable. When we do full mouth rehabilitation, there are many limitations. It's impossible to repair the alveolar bone loss and with elongated crown, the width and length ratio is not harmonious and as a result, the teeth look like that of a herbivore. If you add pink coloring or pink porcelain, it's very difficult to get the right color. It looks artificial and because there's no flange, upper lip support is a problem. 
bone density and bone quality is very bad and there is a high possibility of early failure. However, if you overcome this phase, succeeding in initial osteointegration and overcoming that two to three month period, and if the implant can survive that provisional phase, after that, it can be maintained very well without major issues. Despite these difficulties, once prosthesis is connected, patient satisfaction is very high. That is my impression. What you are saying is that despite unfavorable conditions, when you provide a bridge to a fully dentalist patient, Aesthetic factors may not be satisfactory, however, because the patients can chew well, they are satisfied. They are satisfied with the ability to chew and thus on the overall treatment. So patients actually put more emphasis on functional aspect more so than the aesthetic aspect. Can I interpret it like this? Yes. Very accurate. When you provide implant restoration to fully dentulous patient, profile support or lip support it becomes insufficient. It can look wrinkly. When I treat upper dentulous bridge, I always do simulation using provisional or bridge on patient mouth to see the position and what it's like without flange. I always compare with a denture. I try to make sure that the patient understands that in denture there is this plastic shaped like a gingiva, but in implant there isn't, so it can look shrunken. I first thought that lack of lip support would be very problematic, however, oddly, there are not that many patients who complain about that. However, if you think about it, because the patients are satisfied with the function, it compensates for other downfalls. Patients seem to prefer fixed over removable prosthesis. I can relate. It doesn't fall off and sometimes it hurts here and there. The patient can use the fixed prosthesis to chew better, so I can understand why satisfaction is high. After you provide a fixed prosthesis, you see patients who are extremely thin gain more weight and look healthier, perhaps because of better nutrition. They look much healthier, perhaps due to the added weight. You can really see that the patients have gained weight. Is there any difference between men and women in terms of satisfaction? I have not noticed any differences. Male patients tend to be more reserved. Male patients don't really care about aesthetics, yes. So there's no major difference between sex. Female patients don't really feel sensitive about that issue. Please carry on. There are a couple of uh, formats to follow when you restore fully dentulous patient. This was a 80-year-old female patient. In upper and lower, full denture was used. The bone width and position for implant placement is quite limited. Four implants were placed to do somewhat traditional Brownie Marks hybrid type prosthesis. Resin curing was done. Artificial teeth were aligned like this. Did you do up to first molar? Yes. This patient was extremely happy. She told me it changed her life entirely. And it has been about five years. Her health has improved and she's been using it very nicely. When I was at UCLA, I treated a patient like this and the patient was very satisfied. And the person told me in English, you saved my life. In other words, he told me I totally turned this life around. I guess there was a little bit of exaggeration there, but I felt proud and he was extremely happy to be able to chew again. Other people told me that they were so glad to be able to eat peanuts again. Yes, for people who like nuts, that's so true. This patient had four implants placed in the lower. The upper is full denture. It was very difficult to place implant in the upper. 
Therefore, I treat it lower first. The patient is using full denture very nicely, and I think the patient would be able to use it for the rest of her life without problem. Sometimes the conditions are very good. It's just like placing implants in typical partially dentulous ridge. There's very little alveolar bone loss, and it's almost like a fixed bridge. And it was how this was restored. Or you can restore like this. The first one was cured like a complete denture, and resin was used. Recently, I use all zirconia bridge, one unit bridge. It is affected significantly by the antagonist. If the antagonist is strong, it's not viable. However, if something goes wrong on all on four, you may have to replace the entire prosthesis. And therefore, this is not recommended for younger generation. You may use it with caution for patients above 70s. That's my opinion. When the patient first walks in through the doors, and when the first consultation is made between the patient and the dentist, everyone is nervous, but especially this is true for the patient. This literature came up with statistics after doing a survey on patients who had fixed prosthesis implant treatment. Most people answered that the surgical part was much smoother than they had feared. However, after implant placement, the healing period up until final prosthesis delivery was much more difficult. They said that spending time without teeth or using removable, removable prosthesis was very difficult. According to this study, we need to explain about surgery itself, but we also need to make the patient understand about the discomfort associated during healing period. And when we provide temporary restoration, it is recommended to use the fixed prosthesis rather than removable prosthesis. Koreans, they tend to rush and as for implant treatment, you need to wait after implant placement and we cannot rush the process and we need to explain this thoroughly to the patient. This is like making kimchi. You need to make kimchi and wait until it matures, but Koreans want things to be rushed. So the healing period or maturation period itself may be more horrible for them. Yes. The healing period has decreased significantly compared with the past because there has been significant improvements in implant. This is my actual patient. Eight implants were placed in upper and lower and at the time I did some merging and I normally did conventional loading in those days. I used the existing denture for relining or conditioning. Some patients adjust to removable dentures very well, but for some first-timers, it can be very awkward and painful. Also, at times, right after first or second surgery, for a couple of weeks, the patient will not be able to use the denture, so this can be quite problematic for the patients. This is a major stress for those wanting to receive implant treatment. Living without teeth for a couple of months is difficult, and therefore, I prefer immediate loading. There are several consensus reports if you look at the common grounds. If you place four implants or six implants in the case of the upper, you can get appropriate primary stability and do cross arch rigid splinting. And this will allow for immediate loading. In the case of edentulous patient, especially in the lower, I attempt for immediate loading. Immediate loading can be very difficult at first, but I believe this is the best option to help alleviate patient discomfort. This patient came in like this. I apologize, the image in the, is in the wrong position and the patient was using RPD and there was few remaining teeth. In the case of lower, nine implants were placed, but they all failed. I don't know what it was like before, but you can see there's a lot of 
bone destruction. In the lower, the patient wanted implant over denture in the beginning, so two implants were placed. Locator attachment and over denture was done. In the upper, the existing denture was used. The patient used to wear full denture, so at this stage, the patient was very happy. After one year, the patient came in and requested for fixed prosthesis. At the time, as I placed the two implants in the canine, I talked about how it was possible to provide fixed restoration by placing a couple of more implants in the posterior area. And the patient had hope of receiving fixed prosthesis, so we decided to give it another try. The denture was made not so long ago. It was very stable in terms of occlusion. And in order to use this for fixed prosthesis, this information was maintained. Closed mouth impression technique was used. Tray was used for impression and bite registration. Model was made and mounting was done at the same time. Diagnostic model, you can see that it is mounted on the articulator. In order to place implants two more on each side on premolar and molar, I fabricated a provisional restoration which also served as surgical guide. The VD is almost the same as before. Implants on the interior area were left untouched and two implants on both sides were placed and immediate temporization was provided on the same day. If you look at the lower prosthesis, it's quite bulky and fat. I've seen many cases where the healing process failed due to provisional restoration fracture and as a result, I tend to do over contouring and make a temporary restoration a bit thick and also supplemented with wire. In the lower, if you do cross arch splinting, the success rate is almost the same as conventional loading. In most cases, osteointegration succeeds. Once osteointegration is done, six implants impression was taken, custom CAD CAM abutment was fabricated, and provisional bridge was fabricated. The provisional which reflected the occlusion of full denture was utilized using mounting plate and mounting base. You can see that the occlusion is in similar form. Using this abutment, the final zirconia prosthesis was fabricated. There were six implants, so segmenting was done. In three, yes. I segmented in posterior to canine. The lower is now complete. Once lower was done, after one year, the patient wanted fixed for prosthesis for the upper as well. However, the residual teeth in the upper was not good, so I anticipated such request and I used similar method. I did immediate placement and did immediate loading. Fixed prosthesis in the form of cross arch was provided. I'm going to segment the final prosthesis, however, I made provisional in the form of cross arch and did rigid splinting. The patient used a fixed prosthesis from the day of implant placement, so the patient was free from removal prosthesis. The treatment healing period was significant, but the final prosthesis was delivered well and I've been following up this patient for about three years now. The patient health improved significantly, gained a lot of weight, and I feel really proud. You gained the trust of the patient and did successful treatment. When we first do extensive implant and prosthodontic treatment, at first, I was also troubled as to how I'm going to proceed with surgery, but once you get used to it, you come to have more interest about occlusal issues. And you come to think about how the final prosthesis is going to look like and how you're going to make that into a reality. If you come across an edentulous patient or borderline patients, you can divide the occlusion into three different categories. If there are multiple residual teeth and if the teeth can stably manage the occlusion and vertical dimension and centric position, 
You can maintain or slightly adjust the occlusion and provide final prosthesis. If there are few residual teeth, which are basically no help for occlusion, such as crossed occlusion and severely deviated lower, you can do fixed temporary prosthesis first to stabilize the position of the lower first. Have the patient wear the temporary for about two to three months and after that you can move on to the final prosthesis. In the case of full edentulous case, this is the same as full denture case. With no information available, you need to use back rim to take impression of the jaw relation and make provisional and you can use provisional continuously to make adjustments and then move on to final prosthesis once occlusion is stable. That is the concept that I have. To summarize my lecture, when we restore a fully edential mouth of an older patient, older patients exhaust much quicker than younger generation. Therefore, we need to restore the masticatory function within a short period of time and reduce the treatment time overall. One of the methods we can use handy is immediate loading. There are not that many dentists who utilize immediate loading a lot. If you put in the effort and utilize it, this is a very strong tool. In the case of medically compromised patients, we need to consider very hormonal factors and there are many concerns. We need to take many precautionary steps considering the internal diseases. If we use a minimally invasive approach, I don't think age is going to be a huge issue. There are many patients who cannot take care of oral hygiene very well. Those who are sick, yes. If possible, we need to provide a prosthesis where self-cleansing is made easy. Even if the patient does not really brush their teeth with just a rinsing of a mouth, we need to design it so that the food debris comes out easily. And we need to factor in patient's economic condition. When we provide fixed restoration, we need to place at least four implants. In that case, we can do overdenture. Yes. If you use it well, you can provide fixed bridge and you need to think of your design effectively, reducing the number of implants to be placed and providing an efficient design to reduce the patient burden. This is the end of my lecture. Thank you. Thank you for your lecture. I've learned so much. If we use four implants and do cross arch stabilization very well, immediate loading is possible. I've learned so much. Dr. Park's lecture will now close and we will address your questions via real-time Q&A session. Let's look at the real-time questions that have been raised on dental site. ID Gontinam, I look forward to Friday. ID Danbia, let's go. Danbia has commented that implant is not really difficult for older patients as well. ID Indigo, is there a drilling tip for a four millimeter extra short implant? Also, did you do flapless surgery for extra short implants as well? Four millimeter, did you use it? Yes, in the previous case. Not just four millimeter, but I also use five millimeter short implants. The long-term success rate is known as not very different. However, when you use it in reality, it's not easy. In getting primary stability, it's very technique sensitive. If you make a mistake during drilling, 
you may not be able to get primary stability at all. Even with a slight bone loss, implant can fail, so we need to be very careful. When drilling is done, it is important that there is no wobbling. It needs to go in in the accurate path. The drill hole size and the recommended drill size needs to accurately align. This is very important. When implant is placed at the surface of the implant, the threads need to be in close contact with the bone. I think that's the key. Under drilling is the basics. Slight under drilling is necessary. However, in the lower, if you do excessive under drilling, in that case, there can be bone resorption due to pressure. It's difficult to say it, but it's sort of like a gut instinct. Unlike general implant placement, it is very technique sensitive. When we do implant placement, we talk about 40, 50 Newton centimeter. We need to follow that rule. If it's too tight, there can be compression on the bone and it can lead to bone necrosis. I believe that 40 to 50 Newton centimeter is ideal. Did you do flapless surgery? Yes. I do a lot of flapless surgery for older patients. There are many ways to do this. You can drill on the mucosa. However, if you do that, too much of the soft tissue loss occurs. I make an incision of 1 cm to 1.5 cm. And using curette, I do undermining. By doing so, I can look at the bone contour. Detach, and when you drill, soft tissue does not interfere, so there's less loss. I use that method for flapless surgery. It's not entirely flapless. It's an altered version, like a semi-flapless surgery. Yes. If appropriate incision is made when you connect healing abutment, because appropriate amount of pressure is applied, the need for suture is minimum. I understand. Next, ID Lala. For patients who need full mouth rehabilitation, how do you decide whether to keep or extract the few residual teeth? When there are a couple of teeth left, it might be hard to decide whether to remove or keep them. It's a tough decision both for the patient and the dentist. At times, it's difficult to say with conviction whether the patient should keep or remove teeth. It's related to the ethics for a dentist, and it's a very difficult decision. For me, the most important factor is the age of the patient and whether the patient has periodontitis. As you have mentioned, the biggest factor determining long-term prognosis of implant in partially dentulous patient is periodontitis history. And even if there are teeth left, if there's ongoing periodontitis, for these types of patients, I think we need to make adult decision and do the extraction. Yes, there are many patients like this with over half the root and you are conflicted as to whether you need to extract it or not. It's really tricky to make a decision, for instance, whether to throw out or keep a half-eaten chicken. At times, it can be very difficult to decide. However, as mentioned, implant has very nice success rate and the patients can use it for a long time even if they're fully dentulous. If you just leave the problematic tooth and, and periodontal problem occurs later words, it will cost more for the patient. Not just the cost, but the patient will have to suffer once again and will have to repeat treatment. And if you consider those cases, I think it's better to do extraction. I understand Dr. Park's explanation, but I believe D4 bone has bad long-term prognosis, especially in the upper. 
Yes, long-term prognosis of D4 bone may differ compared to D3 or other bones, but this is not impossible. I cannot remember for sure, but in recent literature, looking at marginal bone loss of implant of different bone types, ironically, the literature reported that the prognosis was better in sponges or low-density bone. Oh, really? I think it may differ depending on the patient, but I'm sure you can't get a better result in D4 sponges bone. In the case of D4 bone, we give a lot of warning to the patients. We say, because your bone is weak, you should not overstretch yourself and you need to brush well. On the other hand, there are really healthy people who don't really look after themselves and all of a sudden, health deteriorate drastically, whereas there are people who look frail but live on for a long period of time. So people with bad bone quality are extra careful. If you say you take good care of it because it's expensive, normally that really translates. Understood. Understood. ID Indigo. In the mandible, if it is D5 bone and there is severe alveolar bone resorption and insufficient distance with the nerve canal, how can I prevent the short implant from falling in? How can we prevent it falling into the mandibular canal? Is there a tip? I'm a prosthodontist and I don't believe it's my place to talk about surgery. However, let me give you my example. Initial drilling, you need to understand the bone quality that is most important. You, Depending on that, you can do undersized drilling. And if there's only very thin cortical bone and there's a sponges bone or sponges bone marrow below, when you place implant on cortical bone, once the implant penetrates the cortical bone, at times you make a mistake and it falls in. I'm no exception. A lot of people use subcrystal implants these days. However, if we use this, this could lead to chaotic mistakes. And in those cases, equicrystal implants can be used. Or there are other options that you can use, like soft tissue level implant, where these mistakes can be avoided. I believe you can utilize these kind of designs. To give you an example, Austin's SS implant, it has a structure and a design where it cannot fall in. In the old days in Korea, in winter season, there was this candy where you'd break it in half and you'd see a bunch of holes in there. In lower at times, such holes exist and therefore we need to pay precautionary steps and be careful. I really enjoyed the rabbit story, Professor Cho. Thank you, Dr. Park Hyung, for the wonderful lecture. I do like it. When we provide bridge restorations to fully edentulous patients, they come in the form of long bridges. There are many issues such as joint fracture and zirconia prosthesis. How can I respond to it? I'd love to hear your opinion. I believe that this question is about how to prevent the joint fractures in long bridges. In the case I've shown you, I've placed the four implants to restore 12 teeth. And as I did it, I knew that fracture could occur and I took caution. And there are cases where restorations have been provided again after joint fracture. Zirconia is an excellent material, but there's a danger of fracture and chipping. If possible, you need to make the joint thicker to the level that cleansing is possible and does not cause major 
obstruction to the contour. The recommended minimum jointed thickness is approximately 5 mm, however, this is insufficient for long span. The length and width should be 7-8 mm, and this would prevent fracture in some cases. I think antagonist is important. If antagonist is strong, long span bridges should not be used, and I believe you should decrease the span by placing more implants. If you place four implants for a full mouth restoration and if a joint fracture, then this is a very serious problem. The occlusion becomes obsolete and you need to do everything from scratch. In those cases, if you can save three-fourths or half, I would save it and in the rest of the area I will place additional implants, one or two of them, and do segmented prosthesis. So you would cut the problematic part off and save the rest by placing more implants. In general, making joints bigger is not a major problem, especially in the case of fully edentulous patient because there is bone resorption. It's easy to do this. Yes. Dr. Park your voice is very calm and it's very easy to understand. Dr. Park, you're very popular, you're very thin, and your voice is very nice. Dr. Park, your suit is excellent. ID Indigo. Regarding fracture rate of one-piece bridge, I've seen you do it using zirconia. Is there a difference in fracture rate compared with PFM? Is PFM good? These days, I have my own lab in the dental clinic, and I provide all zirconia restorations. I don't think I'll be able to go back to PFM because there are so many advantages. Yes, PFM does have its own advantages. The metal frame of PFM rarely fractures. However, ceramic facing or buildup often fractures. I've experienced this too much. After a couple of years, due to excessive chipping, only metal frame remains in severe cases. The prosthesis itself has not failed, but it's not aesthetic nor functional at all. In the case of zirconia, chipping occurs very rarely. If it breaks, it fractures to the point where it's almost unusable in most cases. However, as mentioned, if you can adjust the thickness or contour, I believe zirconia has more advantages than PFM. Recently, digital dentistry has really developed and milling can be done very fast and easy using zirconia and there are many advantages. I believe in the future, more and more people are going to use zirconia. Yes. Next, indigo. I want to know how to fabricate upper provisional. Do you take Omnipack? before placement on the model. For the upper, do you make holes and use the provisional as guide stent? The provisional that I've shown you earlier, I used CAD CAM method. I milled a PMMA and made one piece. In the past, I would align teeth and take on back and then proceed from then on. However, I design digitally in one piece and I mill as one piece. It's much more accurate. It's, it's very convenient and good. I'd manually adjust the area for abutment or if I am to place the implant, I would use drill to make a hole. That's how I fabricate it. Thereby, you can use it like a one guide for placement. Thank you for providing meaningful lecture on new topics every time, Professor Cho. Thank you for the shout out. I think you deserve a coffee coupon. Next, Indigo. 
In the maxilla, there is very severe circular alveolar bone resorption. In the posterior area, with a severe alveolar bone loss for implant placement, do you place it buccally? In placing the implant in the upper posterior area in terms of BP angle, should implant be buccalized or buccal version? In the upper, there is significant alveolar bone loss. Is it buccal version? Should we consider buccally inclined implants? I think this person has a lot of experience and it, if there is vertical and horizontal bone resorption, especially horizontal bone resorption, the size of the arch is reduced. If you take impression, it's almost like that of a children. However, we cannot change the position of the tooth. The buccal side needs to remain as is, and therefore, inevitably, it is buccally inclined. It's the same for the anterior. It is buccally inclined, buccal version. In the posterior area, inevitably, it is inclined buccally. There's no choice in the upper. However, if you just try to place the implant vertically in the upper, the implant screw hole will be exposed and it will be very difficult to provide prosthesis and it will interfere with tongue space. The degree of angle is very important and you can plan ahead using one guide or guided surgery. This is a very difficult problem. I would make it provisional ahead It should come out approximately middle of CEJ. So most of the screw hole, it will come out on the buccal side. And therefore, screw retained prosthesis is basically impossible. You'd have to do cementation in most cases. It's very unfavorable in many ways. However, we need to explain about possible side effects and placing implants like this. For example, there can be a lot of food impaction and because tooth is comes out like this and we need to explain that it may be tough in terms of food impaction. When we make prosthesis, we need to factor this in. Happy Prosthodontics Friday says that Today's lecture was yet another a great one. ID Pitt, today I joined it too late and I only got to see the q and I will study hard though. ID like a movie, do you also do digital prosthodontics? People say that there are still limitations in digital prosthodontics. I would like to know pros and cons of digital and general prosthodontics. I believe this person is an expert as well. In my dental clinic, I have most of the tools that the lab technicians use. However, my dental clinic is not fully digitized. It is to the level that is similar to digitized lab. I don't use intraoral scanner for final prosthesis, and I take impression using silicone. And I make model, and based on it, the lab technician uses the model and uses model scanner and creates prosthesis using zirconia. I use intraoral scanners for provisionals. For example, you can scan ahead using intraoral scanner to make the metal part in making crown for the tooth that has gone endodontic treatment. For final prosthesis, I use the traditional method I mill using zirconia. You take impression using the traditional way. However, at the lab, the lab uses digital technique to come up with a zirconia restoration. I feel that's right. Without model, I don't really feel at ease. That's because you're used to it. However, as the dental field becomes more digitized, I believe you'll use more of the digital dentistry. 
Currently, I believe you use digital dentistry about two thirds of the time because you don't use it for a final prosthesis. However, soon enough, I believe that you will digitize your process 100%. In light of the latest trend, what do you think is the pros and cons of digital and traditional prosthodontics? I believe that everyone knows intuitively. If you are to do digital dentistry, you need to invest up front you, and then you have to learn paying for the tools is not everything when you do digital dentistry you'll be able to do it more accurately and easily some people say that rather than using digital dentistry they prefer doing surgery themselves in order to garner more experience however for beginners and if you're attempting it for the first time, I believe you can utilize digital technology to reduce trial and error. In the case of one guide, with a thorough planning, you are aware where the implant position is within the patient mouth and you have more information going in. Therefore, afterwards, you'll be able to do freehand more easily you can gain more experience very fast. So analog method, you experience a lot of failures, but with digital technology, you can reduce that failures. I believe that the Q&A session is excellent. ID awesome. Under the current insurance plan, over denture is not insured. Surgery is difficult and the cost is quite expensive. So not a lot of patients agree to it. What's your opinion on it? In my honest opinion, it's been a couple of years since I've did overdenture. Because it's not insured, although it's a prosthesis with two implants compared with other prosthesis, it feels quite expensive. That's why I don't really recommend it to the patients. I rarely do overdenture these days. Rather than placing two implants, I rather place four implants and provide fixed prosthesis. And the percentage, in my opinion, of overdenture is decreasing. You prefer providing fixed bridge and you have a lot of experience at that end. However, I believe that there are still some quite people that provide overdenture. I believe that bridge is much better compared to denture. However, for a patient with full denture, I believe that using over denture interim before moving on to a full bridge is a good option as well. Next year, there is going to be a presidential election. I don't know who, but I believe that one of the candidates is going to propose ensuring two implants and over denture for fully dentureless patients. Currently, only two implants are insured. However, I believe that one of the candidates is going to propose four implants. I believe one or two more implants are going to be added. That is my expectation. It's going to help the dental field significantly. Full denture is not easy, but over denture feels quite difficult. It's very difficult to do a good job. Bridge is much better for the patient and over denture, it may be difficult to do so, but at times it can be very fun to do it. ID Pete, thank you for the detailed response. Thank you, professor. Thank you, doctor. ID Good Doctor, I am enjoying Prosthodontics Friday. Now, I believe that we have now exhausted questions. Thank you for asking tons of questions. I would like to express my gratitude towards that. In light of expressing our gratitude, we're going to have a lucky draw and provide coffee coupon, which will be sent individually. Dr. Park Hyu, could you please give a word of advice to fellow dentists who are studying up until late? 
wrapping their heads around how to treat fully edentulous cases and difficult cases. Your input would be deeply appreciated. Dental implanted treatment is quite an amazing treatment in my opinion. It has short history and there are many different treatment modalities in the dental field. I'm a private practitioner and I do most of the treatment myself and I believe Implant provides the best prognosis and dramatic result as well as high patient satisfaction. And I feel very lucky to be working as a dentist where implant has become more widespread. From surgeon's perspective, you need to learn many things. I believe dentists are one of those people who study really hard in the medical field. That is so true. Other uh, doctors ask us, why do you study so much? This is quite hard, but I think it has positives as well. Because our expertise is diversifying and deepening, I believe the dental field is becoming much more staunch. In the beginning, it may be very tough and daunting, but we need to endure through the processes to meet the goal. There are many media outlets and there are so many ways you can learn. If you continue to put in the effort, I believe that your private practice will do well and your quality of life will improve. I'm sure there are many difficulties. However, if you pull through, you'll be able to have a more satisfactory life as a dentist. I hope no one takes my advice the wrong way, and I hope you the best. Thank you. When I was an intern, when I was in my first year in residency, porcelain was first introduced before we used resin, and porcelain really changed the dental field. Not long after I became a professor, implant rocked the dental field. So. I've experienced two major changes in dental field. And when implant and different changes were made, people said our pie got bigger. If your income was 10 million won per month, now it's become 100 million won per month. Implant has been so beneficial for us, and I believe we should study hard. I have high expectations as to what will rock our world once again. I believe the younger generation will study and research hard to provide a brilliant outcome. This now brings us to the end of the lecture. Thank you. Did you enjoy prosthodontics on Friday with Dr. Park Hyun? We were able to gain useful tips for treating fully edentulous patients with fixed implant prosthesis. For the questions that were not answered during the program, these will be addressed during reply in detail. If you weren't able to raise your question, please go to the website. Next time around, Professor Chen Yusong of Dongguk University is going to talk about appropriate ways for cementation depending on implant prosthesis. It's getting chillier in the mornings and evenings. I hope you stay safe. Thank you for watching up until late. Thank you very much. <laughs>